to the Greek goddesses, Aphrodite. I was like really wanting to read that. This is. <laughs> I was like, okay, let's see what shows up. We never know, but we love the confirmations because, of course, we don't have to. Goddess Aphrodite has a very beautiful story, and from a especially apparently coming from Homer, who wrote, you know, also the Iliad and the Odyssey, that she used to be a very powerful and a very beautiful goddess. And but also like Hathor in, in a way extremely seductive, so she just played with her powers, right? Like and she uh, made the god Zeus, who, who was the major Greek god, uh, upset many times because you know she made him fall in love with whoever, and then he had to fall in love and get into trouble with his wife. You know, like this is this is just <laughs> this kind of play of Greek goddesses and gods, who in my opinion were never very mature. So I just wonder what you say about that. Okay. Uh, yeah. At certain points, what happens, she, uh, through some uh, set of circumstances, Zeus somehow managed to make her fall in love with the earthly man. And then she loses her power. So the man gains the power, she loses her power. And she is forced to marry Hephaestus, the, you know, the kind of um, ugly god who, you know, is kind of workman god, right, for, for the Greeks and so on. And, and she... She, she has this beauty and, and she has this eros about her, but she is somehow misguided in the way she's using it. So this beauty and this power and this charisma actually disempowers her. That's why in my book, you know, in, in the other goddess, I said she actually reminds me of Marilyn Monroe a lot. You know, like there is this beauty, there is this, this goddess-like, you know, charisma, how she was shown at least in the films. And, and yet, completely disempowered and not in control of her life and also so and and so i just wonder you know what, what you came up with oh this is so good it's juicy. <laughs> <laughs> so she incarnated at the frequency of 50 indifference so again this disconnect yeah. born at 50 overall frequency 50 there you go and 50 is a frequency of when when somebody is indifferent it can be a frequency of manipulation in her case because she incarnated that way. Yes. Health she viewed through the lens of 125, very impulsive. Hmm. Finances, 50, again, manipulating. Creativity she created through the lens of 50, again, manipulation. As you share, she made people just randomly fall in love, get in trouble. Relationships, 50. There you go, she manipulated relationships. She was a troublemaker. She was a troublemaker. Yeah, maker, yeah, for sure. Personal growth, 125, again. Uh, this impulsiveness, right? Yes. Philanthropy, 50, again, manipulated. Intuition, 50, and under four aspects of intuition for her, all of them were 50. Oh. IQ, intellect, right? The knowledge she viewed through the lens of 250. EQ, emotional intelligence, 50. Oh. So again, disconnected there. Oh. SQ, her level of magnetism and her seduction, 500 that was her superpower that she used to lure people in yes <laughs> uh-huh and and aq is 50 again that's the way to disassociate disconnect to manipulate right she enjoyed her role 100 percent. she loved it <laughs> <laughs> she was in her ego 100 percent, and out of that was 100 percent superior so definitely vanity was her yeah. thing you know it was like superior ego the narcissistic all the way in the now, 100%, she was fully present for, for that experience. <laughs> integrity, 50%. And out of that, 95%, she was in integrity to self and to others, 35%. So there you go. Yeah. Manipulating right. her, do whatever she was having fun with, whatever, right, she used. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness, she was very well aware of what she was doing, 94%. Wow. Clarity, 100%. Alignment with divine purpose, 100%. She actually came here to play that role. Ah, okay. You know? And alignment with personal purpose, 100%. I always say that it's like, you know, the roles we all play, we can't always take anything serious in life because it's like we all get a script, right? That's right. And, and then we're told, okay, you're going to play this role, you're going to play that role. Well, she played the Aphrodite role. She played it really well. And you can't really get mad and the actors were playing the role because they're there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showing so, yeah. But, but you, yeah. You put it really well, Elena, because this is how she is, because she's not malevolent, you know, she, she really doesn't 
cause no. any harm. She doesn't do any good, really, but she brings fun into life, you know? And, and uh, she basically say, this man and this woman, that would be fun, you know? But she doesn't think about the consequences. But exactly. she would be for herself. And that's why she was always in trouble and completely out of control of her own life. Yeah. Uh -huh. This uh -huh. as you said, this impulsive. She was probably often doing it like you said, for the sake of fun, her fun, her entertainment, yes. even when she felt that these two are not definitely going to kill each other. But no, yes, get together. Compassion, 45%. So she didn't care. She literally was there to fulfill her own ego desires, right? Empathy, 57%. Energy, purity, 100%. So she embodied that frequency fully. Yeah. And she had fun, blast being that. And she, obviously she was not in the fifth dimension. This is lower dimension. So as you said, very immature, right? Yes. And you can see this actually process of, through all these revelations, there's almost like an evolution process yes. <laughs> that's yes. happening, right? Yes. <laughs> I love this reading because it is exactly like it's so high if we can say it, you know, about like meeting her face to face because it's exactly ex exactly how I imagine her and how she is portrayed in Greek mythology. So everybody kind of loves her because you actually cannot treat her seriously, you know, and she is fun and she is gorgeous, but honestly, and so she would say like, I like this God, you know, and I'm going to have an affair with him. Why am I in trouble again? You know, it's like one of his friends that we all have, right? Why am I in trouble again? Well, because you did the same thing again, just for fun. <laughs> so this is Aphrodite, but you know, there's nothing bad about her. She, except that perhaps yeah. she's not really responsible. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, she manipulated, right? But she yes. wasn't there to kill, like, some other frequency we reveal, like the 20 and 30, right? That, that are there. Yeah. Okay, the yes, next one. We, we um, classify those that vibrate at, let's say, in her case, at 50, incarnated at 50, and was born at 50. Mm -hmm. We have classified them as, as like shadow players, but now mm -hmm. we decided to, to change that. And now we call them the awakeners. The great awakeners. The great <laughs> awakeners, you know, because by creating contrast is to force people in a way uh, or if they're open but to embody their own uh god energy right and, mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. seek a transformational experience yes because of yes. the contrast right the yes. contrast already she's here to play with you to for you yeah. to figure out are you right. are you gonna play yeah. That yeah. game of manipulation, or are you here to yes. really stand right. fully in your whatever it is you're here to be? That's right. yeah. Because if you want to play, I can distract you. Right? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. Yes. But it will take you off your path, right? Right. Exactly.